What's happening? It's your man Big Ticket doing big things, and this is Rap City Beyond the Basement. From T.I. to Jeezy, Atlanta has impacted the hip-hop culture and continues to do so. We've been celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip-hop. Let's talk about the trash and its impact on the last 20 years of hip-hop. And I could not have this conversation without these brothers sitting here in front of me to my immediate uh, right, right here. KP, the great. What's happening? How are you, sir? Don't leave me hanging. Oh, no, Already, never, never happened. No, never that. <laughs> DJ Jelly Ukan. Tickster. That's How right. How are you, sir? And the world-renowned uh, DJ Greg Street is 6 o'clock forever. We got Wi-Fi. Download your depth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Greg Street, the right. <laughs> what was... The first trap song and or who was the first trap artist all right that's gonna be depending on who you ask but if we got to say artists who were from the trap who started rapping i'm gonna say the hard boys for yep. me in atlanta yep hard boys cmp sammy sam mm -hmm. hmm. scarface <laughs> hey. um, Houston. <laughs> he, he spent a lot of time. <laughs> he, he spent a lot of time in Texas. He, yeah. I, I was on Hard Boys though. Yeah. Okay. Death Row. Yep. They actually sampled the same sample as Fresh Prince. Yes. Yep. I was on Hard Boys, but for the big, the the big ones who's really going crazy, I would say Scarface, Poison Clan, was like in that first wave. Mm -hmm. The first wave that really blew. Okay. South. Of, of street rap, like, of and I think, raps. yeah, we just called it street rap. Ghetto boys. Okay. Ghetto boys, yeah. So Convicts. Was T.I. the one to coin the phrase? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think after we put out Dope Boys in the Trap off the first album, we realized who the fan base was and who we, who we spoke directly to. <clears throat> so... Anyway, and Greg Street broke that right. Greg Street was the person who, <laughs> matter of fact, no, 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 matter of fact, let, props, like Greg was the person who flipped the record over because we put that record on the, on the, on the um, B side of, of the Beanie Man record, I'm serious. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. but we did that knowing that that was the record. Okay. Like, we couldn't put that record out at first because the label was like, you can't play records about drugs on the radio. And you got this perfectly good Neptune Beanie Man record right here. <laughs> You got Pharrell and Beanie Man. Which was a good Pharrell record. Which was a great record, but it you know, premature based on what we knew he stood for and who he spoke to. Right. So we wanted to make sure people knew him first. It's like the first record on his first album was a record called Still Ain't Forgave Myself. Because we understood what we were talking about and who we were speaking to. Classic. So it was like, let's make it human first. So it's not about anything other than art. Okay. So the trap is what we, we think it is, right? If for people who have heard it and heard the term and uh, somehow don't understand exactly what trap music is. What is trap music? Trap music is music made by people who have lived in the environment of selling drugs on some level or another and were able to articulate what that feeling was and what that, that scene was and even what those consequences were. Mm. Listen, to KP sound like a professor right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he breaking it down. <laughs> professor no, that's Prather. true. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> That's what's up. So, I mean, I, how important is trap music to the history or, the, you know, of, of Atlanta and, and its musical impact as far as we're talking about 50 years of hip hop? Is, is, there, is Atlanta Atlanta without trap music? No, it's not without. That's, that was a, a very important phase because really that's when Atlanta really just started breaking out worldwide really at that point when Tip came. It was a whole wave of Atlanta music, different kind of Atlanta music that was hitting at the same time in the 2000s, early 2000s. Yeah, that was, that was our renaissance. Like we had Outkast and we had Goody Mob, we had Criss Cross, you know, like that was what we were known for at the time. That was like, the, those were the biggest records, but that was all, if you look at it, that was professional and shiny. Whereas trap music kind of represented the other side of Atlanta. How, how important were the mixtapes to trap success? It was very important, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Thomas and Daniel live mixtapes, the the platform they created for the street artists, the trap artists. I mean, it was like they DJ actually drama. turned it into a DSP. So now live mixtapes is like um, Spotify, Apple Music, and all right, that yeah. when you go to it. But it was it was like the uh, underground version of those DSP platforms. Yeah. Mm. And and and, and we free. had DJ Drama, but I'm, like you think about the the actual physical mixtapes. Right, that, that's kind of not different from trapping. 
because it's like it's very hand to hand. Right. It's it's people getting things that are exclusive that some some people weren't even supposed to be getting. Oh yeah, before the before yeah. the digital version, yeah. before the before the mixtape sites. Right. The hand to hand mixtapes, and then the mix then to, the mixtapes turn into. They CDs. were actually tapes. Hold on, hold on. There's no way I can I can do this shit. I just looked to my my right and realized right. like where the mixtape shit really I was jumped. About to, uh, yeah. Like and, you know there was Edward J and yeah, there was Oon Camp. Edward J. King Edward J. Who flooded high school cars? <laughs> east side, east side yeah, he, he to the south side. The east side. Yeah, and the guys at big at Oom Camp, um, DJ Jelly, who's you know, one of the song. best. One of the best at it of, of trapping music. And we was out Sunday through Sunday, <laughs> all up and down Simpson Road, Maddox Park, just working Sunday through Sunday, running up the cars. Like little tape, drug dealers. A cassette tape. A real then, running, up the, running up the cars. And then the crazy part that everybody overlooks about the Oom Camp that was really, really <clears throat> smart. All the artists that were signed to Big Oom and the DJs that was part of the Oom Camp, they all worked at the record stores. Yeah. Like I heard a story, somebody told me the story the other day that Pastor Troy and Baby D met when Pastor Troy was bringing his music into the record stores because Baby D worked at the record store. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. That's what we did. We dubbed the tapes, we went to the stores, and we went to the parties all at the same time and, and trapped the tapes, cassettes. Yeah. Every day. Um, like Distribution. That was distribution. Hand in. We had the product. <laughs> hand in hand. Hand in hand. Now, all of this comes on the heel of the South got something to say. Organized Noise is mm -hmm. clearly making space here in Atlanta for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. How does it change Atlanta's future? Well, I, I can say this because as a member of the Dungeon family, <laughs> um, where, where, we, where we were at that time in, in, at the Source Awards, where that, that happened, mm. it was we had been so dead set on impressing you know everyone outside of Atlanta that we were able to do what they had created and did it at a level that was you know that was it was competitive and to win that award and get that reaction it meant that we just had a lot more work to do and it was just a, and, and I'm gonna say this the thing that I realized is we were in New York by ourselves so at a point you need the rest of your crew right so it, it opening up that door was like the natural progression but it was necessary as well so even, cause I feel like some of them outcast records. Say it. <laughs> what? We're rather trappy. Yeah, I mean, but, but it, again, it's like without being, you know what I'm saying? Well, it was, it was, it was, it was looked at as more elevated and more enlightened. Mm. But it was, it was absolutely the experience. Like all of us came from a place where our families either sold or used. We all knew what it was. We we put all our shit together and made records. But the people who were making records were teenagers in Atlanta. So what we saw was trapping. We knew what the car, the people with the cars, they we knew what they were doing. We knew what the girls were gravitating towards and we understood it in a in a in a real um just instinctual way. And it's when you get poet, people who can do art, they can describe it in a way that, you know, sometimes it can be like straightforward or sometimes it can be like really abstract. Outcast had the ability to be abstract, so it didn't feel like you were listening to drug dealers. Mm. And and they were so young. And they were so young right. that they hadn't had that experience. Whereas <clears throat> after them and the doors open, you get talented people who happen to really be in the streets, right? And finding and realizing, oh, we can do this. Mm. And, and, I, and the Outcast, the crazy part about Outcast that a lot of people overlook, we all jump to the South, got something to say, but KP will could attest to this. Inside of the face organization, inside of the face records, when it came to Outkast, the the big powers that be at, at the face. I even had a conversation with LA about this. They didn't understand what Outkast was doing. Mm -hmm. Like Players Ball was actually a Christmas song that mm -hmm. was like the last song on a LaFace compilation. compilation. I wasn't. I had never even came to Atlanta before. <laughs> I found the song. Right. Like Big Gip had a video on somebody's <clears throat> podcast a few days ago saying Greg Street played Players Ball yeah. first. The, the first, and we we quit our job. I was, <laughs> I, I was once I found once I found the song because that's like my personality. I'm real hands on, so I would talk. Greg to Greg is a DJ. Yeah, for I would real. talk. Huh, what do you yeah. say? I said, Greg a is a DJ. Yeah. For real. So I would I would talk to I would talk to. I I started talking to Rico, I started talking to Ian Burke, I started talking to Mia Red, I started talking to Mom Benjamin. And there's a, a legendary day that everybody talks about in Dallas when I brought Outkast to the Bomb Factory. Mm -hmm. And that, that was like their first big concert. 
like because people in Atlanta wasn't really on it yet. Yeah, Atlanta but, wasn't the market that broke Outkast. Actually, Oakland and in Texas. Yeah, like the Bay and really? Texas broke it. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, like me and Pimp C was big Out Outkast fans before they broke. Okay, we, we would have conversations about Big Boy and Dre before we even met them. We had yeah. never met them, and then I reached out. Like I said, I reached out to Rico. Got in touch with Rico, then it, it came all the way down to Shanti. They brought him out to Dallas. We did in stores, we did concerts, we did different different events. They did uh, our big concert for the radio station one time at Texas Stadium. Okay. Like it was it was like it was outcast with those guys that we could hear naturally, just organically. And it was different from Scarface. It was a different sound from right. what you had heard from the South, from the ghetto boys, from the convicts, from Big Mike, from Miami, from home team and Poison Clan and everything that was going on. Even Manny Fresh was around back then, people don't remember, yeah. mm -hmm. with, with Gregory D. Right. But Outkast had that sound. It was just something about what the Dungeon family's ear for music and what they could put together was like, it and was crazy. To be fair, it was, we had the, the benefit of LAM, Babyface and Pebbles who had made big commercial records. Yeah. So they were <laughs> like, we understood that their, their first um, instinct wasn't hip hop. Mm. So we play like these super <laughs> rap records and they were like, yeah, I, I don't get it. And we also understood we had to, to make something to get past them. Right. So learning from them how to make songs helped us in that way because they basically the told thing. us how to produce. Well, they made amazing records. Yeah, they, That Donnell Jones album, to me, is still probably one of the greatest yeah. R&B albums of all time. I tell L.A. Reid that all the time. Yes. Whenever I go into Tip Studio, mm -hmm. they used to be Silent Sound, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the sound that they created for Donnell Jones inside this building. Mm. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, 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 we had a cheat code. Like, we had the best producers in black music right. at the time as our like our mentors as your big homies yeah yeah hey t when i first heard saw that tape you know and i'm i'm talking about the cassette that had the <laughs> outcast on it you know i'm the face and mm -hmm. tony brax i'm like yeah and i got to that i was like what the hell is this out as a dj yeah, in atlanta man. i was like i don't what the why they put this on here mm -hmm. but then i saw a, like a couple of months later i saw the video mm -hmm. and i saw dre with the with the braids and all that on i was like wow these <laughs> Right up the street, like I was. It was a rap. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, like you said, Atlanta just didn't catch on right away. Right. Yeah. It just didn't. I could just listen to what they were saying yeah. and the music. The video wasn't even out when yeah. I heard the song on the because it was the only rap song on the album. Like technically, it's a Christmas trap song. Yeah, like that's real. If is. you listen to the, the lyrics, first Christmas trap, trap song. Yeah, there I mean, <laughs> when you think about it, it's like ain't no chimneys in my ghetto, so I don't be hanging my chimneys. Well, I, I don't know the words off top, but <laughs> everything about it was it's a Christmas record. Slanging. It was like figuring out how to hustle up money to get to Christmas. Listen to the song now. No, yeah, listen to it. To feel the that was a hustler song. Like yeah. the junkies. And, like everything about that song was about our version of Christmas. Got it. So it wasn't necessarily deemed trap music because. The thought hadn't happened. Right. But they we, was talking street. Yeah, it was street shit. Okay. Yeah. So now, as we do our thing here at this wonderful curated space mm -hmm. uh, dedicated to Atlanta's impact of hip hop, if right there on that wall it said trap music. Mm -hmm. and well, there put, is a trap music museum in here in Atlanta is. owned by TI. Shout out Check to it out game. when you're in town. If there was just the trap music and under it you had to place one song that is the definition Dope of trap boys. music. Dope Boys in the Trap by T.I. Jelly? That same thing. I almost got into a fight with Alex playing <laughs> at, at his club. Yeah, seriously. It's crazy. it's crazy to say one song. Because you got you got to think, like, when Future came out, Future took it to the next level. And then people don't realize Future is Dungeon Family. 1, yeah, he's Dungeon Yeah, 1,000%. But and not, future, not future, the, future, when Future came in the game, Future really turned it up. Cause yeah, a lot he of elevated. Pay attention. Future put out over 150 records in six months. Damn. If you go look at the dates on all those rapping and all the records, he put out over 150 songs in six months. Yeah, that's trapping at his best. That's trapping at his best, even though he was telling, you know, get this prescription and all that. But you're right. <laughs> Future was, hey, Future is definitely shit. Yeah. Future, I, but, Gucci. But, but, but I'm saying, I was about to say, but if you're saying, for, like, when I say definitive, I'm yeah, not. like that. Like, if you have to, if there had to be a song that was. You put up Ooh. the picture. That's the definition. So there I misunderstood. The, there, so I, I hear what you're saying. There is not. There is. There's no, not one. You, you can't pick one. You can't like, do that. It's so many big ones. You got Future, Gucci, Tip, Jeezy, Jeezy, Jeezy. It just, Thug it, Motivation it's just one so one many. Yeah. It, Young Thug, if you, if you ask me what was the first, I would say the first one that I would say I consider trap music 
was it would be dope boys in a trap for me okay so what what other genres or regions if there are any are connected to trap shit when memphis? you think detroit memphis, oh yeah, definitely memphis detroit off the rip. memphis miami new orleans detroit mm-hmm. detroit um, chicago. chicago chicago yeah and it's what connects them to subject matter or the sound no the plug <laughs> the plug. Ohio, you got some Ohio. Ohio, spots too. yeah. Ohio. And now you're right. Now you're right though. <laughs> Definitely subject all day. Houston, Cleveland, Houston. Dane, Flint, Houston. Yeah, but Houston had their own sound. Like it's 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 hard to put them but in that region. Had their own sound. Yeah, no, but I'm saying they had their movement. Uh, that's what I said. They had their movement first. So it's almost like we would pull them in, but they had they're actually bigger than that. Like I feel like Texas music is its own thing. Right. Oh, it's definitely big. Houston, yeah. Houston, and Houston and Dallas music was was big, big. Yeah, like, you got to say Dallas. You're right. You saying Dallas? Houston and like Dallas. Yeah. yeah. It was big, big. You got DOC. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, Nemesis. Damn. All the way to you didn't go to Yellow Boy. Feel the bass. <laughs> Greg gonna break out Slim, the history. Bro. Slim, Slim Thug. Yeah. Chameleon. Yep. Now, Paul Wall. Mike Jones. Zero. 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 Yep. Zero. Zero. Still big. Yep. Yeah. He the old triple O. Trey the truth. Trey the truth. What up, Trey? <laughs> yeah. No doubt. So now, as, as we talk about the evolution of, of, of trap music in, in Atlanta, we can't not mention, uh, like, the people who were fueling this, the, the DJ Toomps. Yes. Um, the the uh, Shawty Red. Shawty Red. Zaytoven. Zaytoven. Yeah. Uh, DJ Monte. DJ Monte. Monte. DJ Monte. I, I, does it survive without their input? Absolutely not, because they brought the the, the sonic to the vision of it. Mm. And I think you you have to have like that perfect score to whatever movie you're selling, right? And some and, of those guys are real producers. They're just not beat makers. Yeah, no, some actually, of all of those producers. guys we just mentioned are producers. So they understand how to put the whole thing together. It's not just a beat. So like, let's just say DJ Toon. Who produced Dope Boys in the Trap? Right. Mm-hmm. But DJ Toomp is really like our Dr. Dre, because mm-hmm. he came from the from the bass music from the Booty Shake era <laughs> to the trap music. Right. Also the hip hop to Mariah Carey from trap music to, from Booty Shake to trap music to Kanye Mariah Carey mm-hmm. all the way to 23. Yeah. That's an amazing evolution. Hey man, I mean it, it's talent. Like it's just real actual. It's actual factual talent. So now T.I. is here. The yeah. album is trap music. Yes. 20 here, years ago. Here comes Jeezy. Yes. Here comes Future. Yeah, Gucci. Here comes Guwa. Gucci. Gucci then. Then Future, yeah. Gucci then Future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, how does Atlanta feel about it? Uh, uh, is it, is it a, a moment of pride? Is it just, there yeah, we go yeah. again? Because now this is, to me, for some, somebody who moved here, watching it evolve this is the moment where atlanta starts to put hip-hop in the headlock yeah because mm-hmm. again shawty low uh d4l like rocco uh, rocco, rocco man you can't forget about rocco. you can't say rocco. future without rocco for me yeah, you, can't right. fa- you can't say future without rocco yeah because as, mu- as much as as much as future is dungeon family rocco put the hustle behind what the music was yeah. he can't rock rocco came to me on a saturday yeah. he brought future to the station there's a video on youtube about it of the day he did it, he's like, Street, I'm about to make this guy the biggest guy in the game. Yeah. And he did it. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah, like literally, like he, he, he put him on a, the YC record, the Racks on Racks, and understood that that was the hookiest shit ever. <laughs> and everybody wanted to know who that person was. Yeah. Wow. YC had a deal, but Future had that. He had the bag. YC had a deal, but Future didn't. <laughs> didn't. Yeah. I had to break that down to Future because Future really was. Moving it was the, crazy. Right. Yeah. It was a crazy situation. Like yeah, he future, didn't understand. I'm like, Future, chill out because you're not signed. You like, my, and my example to him was if you took Michael Vick as a free agent and said, hey, listen, I quarterback, I quarterback, I quarterback we're going to the Super Bowl. Our quarterback just got hurt. Come yeah. play in the Super Bowl. You go out there and run for 100 and throw for 100. You're not signed. You signed for this one game. Right. And the rest is history. Yeah, you set your price after that. Yeah, and, but he didn't get it at first. Willie Beeman. <laughs> Steaming. <laughs> like, <laughs> so if you and I'll start with you, Greg. If you had to put, we're talking about Atlanta hip hop and trap music. Who's on the Mount Rushmore? I knew it. 
of Atlanta. <laughs> Mount Trapmore, I would Mount like. Tra- Mount, Mount Trapmore. Trapmore. Yeah, I like, I like that. that even better. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I do that, I do that type of shit. <laughs> Tim, with four people? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Tip, Jeezy, um, Future. <laughs> Tip, Jeezy, Future. Um, who you say? Yeah, he ain't wow. say nothing. Oh, why you like oh, yeah, it? I, oh, definitely Gucci. <laughs> yeah. I, I was on, waiting for you to trap. say it. In fact, on I, I, I was supposed to say Gucci second. Mount Trapmore. Let's yeah. be being specific. Yeah, Mount Trapmore. Trap Mount Trapmore. Atlanta Mount. Yeah. Being respectful, I was supposed to say Gucci second. Okay. Tip, Gucci, mm-hmm. Jeezy, and Future. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that Jeezy? a unanimous? That's that's the same for me, too. Hands down for Trapmore. Yeah, I'm not saying the first trappers. I'm saying the trappers who did it the best and represented it in a way that you it is impeccable, undeniably trap yeah, excellence. And it, and it changed the whole new generation, especially the younger generation now. Like yeah. it, it has influenced everything. So are we still trapping? I don't know that trapping ever dies, like it on some level. It goes nowhere. I'm in the clubs all the time. It don't go anywhere. Ooh. And Ooh. it ain't it ain't all drugs. It's like whatever it is you pushing. Who are the new trappers? <laughs> <laughs> that, oh man, that's so many. Pick one. I mean, Pick that, one? It, 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 trap is kind of diversified too. Yes, yeah, it's, it's we've diversified, diversified the portfolio. It, it, it's, it's diversified because it's not just all about drugs and stuff anymore. Like you know, uh, I think I think drill is a a byproduct of trap. Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. Okay. You know, it's like the East Coast version. It's the, it's their own version of. So are the NBA young boys? Yes. NBA, by the way, thank you, Tigger. You're welcome, sir. Like that was too. yeah. <laughs> so t- 21. 21. 21 Savage. Um, absolutely, young boy. Ghana. 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 Young Dro. And Lee. Dro is kind of in the. It, it, I, I feel bad because Dro he he's in the middle of that. Like he's he wasn't Tween. the first one, but he wasn't. He's not in that young. Tween. NBA. Yeah. Young boy. Chopper. The, oh yeah, that chop in there. Chop was definitely in there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so many now. Yeah, Lucy the, Bird is a byproduct of it. You know, he is. That's absolute. Migos. But, Migos. Thank you. Well, um, not together no more. But twenty. Um. Um. Uh, little, <laughs> little baby. Little baby. Little baby. Little baby has done it. Like almost in in my opinion, personal opinion, he's done it the best out of. The, the the newer ones the new generation yeah because he's generation. done it in a way that he's been able to maintain his star while maintaining his his authenticity mm. but not growth. up the bag <laughs> and, and and the growth yeah that's what i meant by not <laughs> the bag <laughs> growth yeah that was the word growth <laughs> great word oh there's been a, a a thing here in particularly in atlanta where trap music artists seem targeted for their subject matter. Uh, and there's even court cases pending mm-hmm. where they're trying to put their lyrics on trial. Which is unfair, like, to use art against an artist um, for something that isn't art, right? Because you don't use a Steven Seagal movie against, you know, you don't, you don't use movies, movies against actors mm. who will get in trouble. Like but it actors, happens, but but the difference in that KP is damn. I knew he was gonna act, say this. Shit. The actors didn't write the script. To uh. that, <laughs> okay, but like, and nobody went after um 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 Michael. Co- uh, I mean Francis Ford Coppola for The Godfather. Like he's Italian, right? Like nobody went and tried to you know use that as a thing. One now my, now what? I will say this. Now listen, no, there's no way around the fact that a lot of the 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 records come from a real place. Right, so it's inspired by something that really happened, some you know, some circumstance. So sometimes the exaggeration, if met with an actual issue, you can kind of put it together and, and, and make a case. So I understand why they do it. Mm. I don't. I just don't think it should be done. Jelly. Yes, I mean it's you know it's unfair, unfortunately, but you know a lot of the times <laughs> with the younger cats coming out, they gotta be like, you know what, I ain't gonna talk so much trash. They need to do what they want to do. But it's just unfortunate that these type of things gonna happen. Yeah, straight up. 
Don't snitch on yourself. Yeah, <laughs> don't snitch. Yeah. Thank don't you, Greg. Don't, don't snitch on yourself. Don't snitch on yourself. Some of this is, is that born out of. But one of my, well, let me tell you uh, something, though. Uh, I'm going to an interesting ahead. point to that. One of my new favorite rappers, a guy by the name of Aldi 300. He's from East Texas. East, East, yeah, East Texas. And me and him had an intense conversation about this same subject. His whole thing is on the Italian side, the mafia was trapping and doing what they was doing, and then they evolved into the business world. Right. They've never given black people that same opportunity mm. as all the criminals in the in the United, the United States. States. They've yeah. never the 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 um, from the black community. They never had a chance to experience that growth and evolve. I mean, some people. You had a few people that that that's there's a couple I can think of. A few that got by. <laughs> there's a, there's, there's a big by. one. That's an obvious one. Some but, big names. <laughs> but as a whole, <laughs> right. like as a whole, as a whole. Well, right. And and this is the part where going back to the original point, which is don't snitch on yourself. Like Frank Sinatra didn't sing about trapping. He didn't he didn't sing about the the thing that he saw happen. So it, it's about figuring no, no, out how to be art. The things that he did. Oh, that he did. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Right. No, but but same. I'm on top of that. Yeah. Same with that. Same with that. But I'm saying that's again that's that's where it, we do have to have some kind of um, discernment. In every person rapping is not is an artist, mm. and artists sometimes can can describe something without giving away detail that gets them hemmed up. Whereas sometimes people who are just talking their truth. Like, you know, people are being paid to be candid. Like, that's how you get attention now. So it's actually, it's, it's set up for them to think the more transparent, transparent they are, that, the, you know, more of a fan base. But it's like, you know, police are fans too. So how do y'all feel it sitting at the BET Hip Hop Awards watching the mixtape era with dr- dr- drama? Yes. And the, tr- I mean, that was trap, that was yeah. trap, trap, trap. I mean, Ti comes out and does well. Fab first. Fab came out, did his thing, then. But I'm saying like the Ti Jeezy part of it. Was, yeah, I mean, it's it's pride in that. It's like it's it's understanding that you that the music made a mark. The music was received in a way that is still celebrated. Um, and it's and it's from it's from us. It's from Atlanta. Yeah, it's tight. That's right. All all Atlanta music, all Atlanta terminology. I mean, I wasn't there, but. I mean, shoot. He you were the in spirit, sir. <laughs> I mean, you gotta, you gotta really understand it. Like, it's, it's been a, it's been an evolving process. Mm. You know, we talking about three generations. You know what I'm saying? We talking about thirty years. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you gotta think, people that grew up on trap music are now in their forties and fifties. Mm. So it's like when you look at it, and you look at what the kids are doing now and what they're being scrutinized for, it's Probably of what is what it has manifested to from the beginning to now. Yeah, but right. but let's not act like the the term wasn't sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Like it's never not been a part of the the honesty of music and art. No doubt. I got. I actually have a clip of the Curtis Mayfield song in my phone. Anytime somebody talks to me about music and the content of music, <laughs> I send them a little video of Curtis Mayfield on Soul Train. <laughs> I'm your mama. I'm in the, I'm the, in the alley. That's your man. <laughs> yeah, that might have been the first trap song, really. Yeah, right. <laughs> one time for Curtis Mayfield. Curtis That's Mayfield, right. one time. From the A. <laughs> which, which drops back into Outcast, but you know, it, it all works out. It, it's, it's secular. Well, listen, this has been an amazing history of trap music from the people who know it best. Shout out to the homie Greg Street. Thank you for being here, sir. Street. DJ Jelly, KP the Great. And listen, anytime you need some education and upliftment, you need to pull up on your boy Big Tig. This has been another edition of Rap City Beyond the Basement. I holler. Yeah.